Welcome. We are live here in Costa Mesa, California, awaiting a recall Newsom Larry Elder for governor here in the state of California. This is a rally for the volunteers who have signed up and have worked hard over the last year or so to get him not only on the ballot, but to get this recall effort on the agenda that all happens tomorrow. Welcome everybody, my name is Brian Glenn. We're here live at the Hilton here in Orange County, California. And this really has been ground zero for all of this Larry Elder uh, recall, Newsom groundswell of support right here in Orange County. We've got a, uh, a song being sung beside us. We'll get to all that's going on here today, but we wanna thank our partners for this broadcast. Uh, a company that has been very adamant about protecting your freedom is that is I love my freedom.com. I love my freedom.com. They've been a great partner for this broadcast and also for tomorrow's broadcast as well, because kicking off tomorrow is election day here in California. And that's when we're going to know if all of these efforts has gone the way it should. So we encourage everyone right now to support our partner, I love my freedom.com and don't forget to put in the promo code RSBN at checkout and you'll see some of the benefits and the money that you'll save with that. They've got all kinds of buy one, get one specials on there as well. So I love my freedom.com. I love my freedom.com. Put in the promo code RSBN and receive a discount and special promo codes and savings along with that as well. We'll talk about more with them a little bit later in this broadcast, but we're glad you're joining us. And even if you live outside the state of California, all eyes are on this state because there's a lot going on here in terms of political change, of course, with COVID and the hitting you know all of the country and of course california hit hard with lockdowns and mandates from governor newsom uh killed off a lot of the small businesses here in california and that's been one of the driving agendas here and of course the rate of homelessness in the state of california the economy taxes crime all of this is on the front burner of the reasons why Newsom needs to be recalled. And of course, I remember covering uh, this recall Newsom effort back in Ventura last year, just trying to get enough uh, signatures on the ballot to get it to this point. And we saw the enthusiasm was overwhelming at that point. And it seems like it's growing and growing and growing. Of course, you've seen the homeless videos inside of the biggest metropolitan cities here, San Francisco, Los Angeles, many of uh, around the border as well. They have a incredible surge in homelessness here in the state of California due to a lot of things, due to a drug problems, uh, immigration problems, uh, cost of living is outrageous here. All that contributes to the homeless issues right here in California. We're going to talk to some people here uh, today. Larry Elder will take the stage before too long and thank his supporters here. And I'm really uh, interested to learn exactly some of the things that he's been talking about the last two days. Of course, we all saw that viral video of him being assaulted there in Venice, uh, getting a um, an egg thrown at him uh, by a white uh, kind of a Antifa like uh, person with a gorilla mask and a pink wig. And imagine if that would have been someone uh, attacking a Democrat candidate. You can imagine some of the outrage that would have happened from that, but very little outrage from that, and very little media attention as well from that incident. So we'll talk about that as well. Larry will talk about the economy. I'll talk about crime. I'll talk about what his plans are to turn this state around. If you're watching us right now in California, it's very important to tag a friend, make a comment on this broadcast because tomorrow is the day of the recall. And of course, you might have seen some of the news on social media. We covered it here on right side of some of the people going to the polls earlier today and being told that they've already voted. We'll talk about that as well. We'll go into the national anthem here in a second. We'll pause for that. We'll come back and then we'll walk around and talk to some of the people here. Let's go ahead and cut to that. early light what so proudly we hail 
As the twilight's last gleaming Through broad stripes and bright stars Through the perilous fight O'er the ramparts we watch We're so gallantly streaming And the rocket's red glare The bombs bursting And air gave proof through the night That our flag was still there Everybody, oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. God bless all you. sodas and there's water and please be free to uh, you know talk amongst yourself and we also have bright side broadcasting in the house over there so we invite all of you to go up there go talk to him uh, tell your story give your passion because right side broadcasting is definitely on the right side so God bless all of you thank you so much that was certainly a nice shout out uh, by her today but yes we are here and we're glad to be here uh, to talk about all this, and I guess we'll talk to you. What's your name? Where are you from? My name is Yvonne. I'm from Riverside, California. I'm originally from Ohio. I moved here 32 years ago, and I've seen a decline that I can't even begin to tell you. So, I think one of the things that becomes so evident when you drive around California is the homelessness problem we have here. I lived back here in the you know mid. Uh, 90s to by mid 2000s this is not even comparable to what we had back then now i'm a business consultant many of my business owners are restaurants hurting immensely with all these governor newsom mandates so it's it's just been horrible for our state so i'm here representing larry elder i'm out putting signs up and everything and He's going to win. Which was interesting because as soon as I got into town, I did a random poll of some of the things and asked people, you know, what, what do you think about the recall? You know, who do you support? It was tough to find anybody who wanted to support Gavin Newsom. And it was tough to find anybody who did not mention uh, Larry Elder as their choice. What are you hearing as well? You know, I've been knocking on doors and quite frankly, they're done with the media because right now the media is saying that Larry Elder's done, that Newsom had 61%. You and I both know that that's not true because I'm talking to people at the grocery store, business owners, everyone is, go is voting yes on the recall. And they are, you know, some of them don't know much about Larry Elder, but they're finding out because he is on Instagram, he's on Facebook, and he truly is passionate about a business owner because he was a business He was a business owner, right. He was a business owner. And to hear his story of how he came to make this decision to run is amazing. So everyone, I always say, this is not a Democrat issue. This is not a Republican issue. This is a patriot issue. We the people, we need to get our freedom back and make sure every vote counts. And I've seen a lot of people uh, that are independents that say, yes, I do not like the way this state is going. And uh, therefore, you know, I might not have traditionally voted for a Republican or conservative. But on this issue, on this uh, recall issue, they very might will do that. It's so true. Um, you know, ever since President Trump lost, <laughs> I've been wearing the red, white and blue. And it's a great conversation piece. And I always start out with I'm a patriot. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming out here. I appreciate it, Yvonne. God bless you and all your efforts. Let's turn it to our attention to the podium. We have a gentleman speaking right now going over some of the reasons why Gavin Newsom should be recalled. Take it away. Or maybe it's Gavin refusing to give up that emergency executive power even after the CDC lifted all restrictions.
Could it be Gavin's new restrictive gun and ammo laws that would make it easy for the government to seize your guns? Or maybe it's Gavin sitting back and enabling Antifa and BLM to terrorize cities, rip down statues, and burn already struggling businesses to the ground. Could it be Gavin's failure to repeal Prop 47, reducing felonies to misdemeanors? Or is it Gavin legislatively handcuffing the police with AB 392, constricting their ability to do their jobs or even defend themselves? Is it Gavin forcing cops to second guess themselves when they have barely half a second to react? Or maybe it's Gavin making it no longer illegal to not help an officer in need. Could it be Gavin overruling the vote of the people by staying the death penalty for over 700 hardened criminals on death row? Or is it Gavin welcoming pregnant women to come to California to fund and facilitate abortions of innocent babies? Or maybe it's Gavin dismantling the death chamber and redistributing death row inmates through California's prison system. Could it be Gavin granting criminals leniency, giving them lighter sentences with Prop 57? Or is it Gavin closing the gun stores so Californians can't defend themselves and their families? Or maybe it's Gavin making 76,000 more violent career felons eligible for early release. Could it be Gavin fast-tracking criminals back onto the street, allowing the clearing out of jails with AB 109? Or is it Gavin closing California prisons as crime rises in major cities? Or maybe it's Gavin interfering with investigations by making it harder for law enforcement to identify criminals. Could it be Gavin signing SB 145 into law, reducing penalties for sodomy with minors, protecting pedophiles from having to register as a sex offender? Or maybe it's Gavin enabling serial rapists to continue terrorizing children. Is it, a, is it that a man caught with a mountain of child porn can be arrested, then allowed to post bond and walk free? Or is it the grotesque sexual education materials being peddled to children as young as four? And I'm sure you've heard Gina Gleason talking about it. Could it be Gavin signing SB 276 into law, restricting parents' right to seek medical exemptions to vaccines? Or is it children's medical records being automatically entered into a state health database? Or maybe it's allowing schools to take children for medical procedures, even an abortion, without the parents' knowledge or consent. Could it be Gavin putting the teachers' union's interests ahead of the interests of children and families? Or is it Gavin shutting down California's public schools while his own kids went to private school? Or maybe it's Gavin forcing mask mandates on children, but not for his own kids who were caught wearing a mask at a summer camp. Could it be Gavin letting teachers' unions dictate when schools reopen and on what terms? Or maybe it's pushing mask mandates on kids for schools to resume in-person learning, even though minors are statistically at the least risk. Could it be Gavin's executive order to phase out gasoline-powered cars by 2035? Or is it Gavin threatening a state takeover of Pacific Gas and Electric? Could it be Gavin pushing the use of electric cars, then urging electric car owners to not charge their car? so as to not overwhelm the failing power grid? <laughs> ah, too late. Maybe it's the rolling blackouts that cause deaths of seniors who depend on reliable power for their medical equipment. Could it be Gavin cutting $150 million from California's fire protection budget? Or is it the hundreds of square miles of unmaintained forestry that always catches fire, inadvertently creating a fifth season fire season. Or maybe it's the Dixie fire destroying the entire town of Greenville. Could it be Gavin wanting to raise taxes by $2 billion, including a tax on water? Or is it Gavin letting our fresh water flow from our mountains out to the ocean while toying with the idea of pumping treated wastewater into our taps? Is it the manufactured water shortage affecting farmers and completely cutting off all water to the farmers in the Klamath River Valley? Or maybe it's Gavin's policies forcing farmers to destroy their crops because of a severe lack of water. 
Could it be California having the highest homeless rate in the country? Or is it California having the highest poverty rate in the country? Is it the billions of dollars wasted on the failed homeless programs? And right now we're at about $13 billion wasted. Or maybe it's the homeless eating trash out of the dumpster. Is it the lack of healthcare treatment for the mentally ill? Or maybe it's the tens of thousands suffering from substance abuse. Is it the ineffective needle exchange program? Or is it the return of typhus, while countless thousands of homeless people are left to slowly die under freeway overpasses? Or maybe it's the lack of transparency with Measure H and Proposition Triple H. Could it be Gavin criminally defying federal law with fostering sanctuary cities, just not in his backyard? Or is it Gavin hindering the federal government's efforts to complete the southern border wall? Could it be Gavin going out of his way to aid and abet illegal aliens to protect them from ICE? Or maybe it's allowing illegal aliens to vote in local elections and sit on state boards. Could it be Gavin reinstituting the individual mandate to punish Californians for not getting health coverage they already can't afford? Or is it Gavin granting free medical health care coverage to non-citizen adults up to 26 years old and then rolling it out to seniors? Or maybe it's Gavin giving illegal aliens income tax refunds, welfare, housing, education, food stamps, and cell phones, all for free. It's not free, it's taxpayer funded. Could it be California having the highest state income tax in the country? Or could it be having some of the highest state sales tax in the country? Or is it California having the highest property tax in the country? Could it be the sky high cost of rent? Or maybe it's the constant attacks on Howard Jarvis's Prop 13, hurting commercial property owners. Could it be Gavin wanting to raise business taxes? Or maybe it's the introduction of a new tax with every bowel movement. <laughs> Could it be Gavin having carte blanche to raise gas taxes at whim without, go without voter approval? Or maybe it's the billions of dollars wasted on the high-speed train to nowhere that no one asked for. Show of hands, how many people wanted the high-speed train? Okay, one. <laughs> or, is it, or is it California having some of the highest gas prices in the country? Could it be Gavin diverting gas tax revenue to his pet projects instead of roads, dams, and bridges? Or is it California having the highest vehicle registration costs, yet still having some of the worst roads? Could it be Gavin having zero accountability and transparency when it comes to spending? Or maybe it's Gavin Newsom spending $12 million to convert an arena to treat COVID patients, but only treating nine patients. Could it be Gavin wanting to close a veteran's home with a $22 million annual budget right before Memorial Day? Or maybe it's the thousands of veterans who wrote a blank check up to their life to serve this country, left destitute on the street. Or is it Gavin blowing $20 million of our, taxpayers, uh, of our tax dollars on studying vaping? Or maybe it's Gavin spending $125 million on cash payments to illegal aliens. Could it be Gavin granting a billion dollar no bid contract to a Chinese firm that donated tens of thousands to his campaign to produce faulty face masks? Or is it blowing an additional $315 million on a second order of masks from the same company? Could it be Gavin sending over $30 billion in fraudulent EDD checks to prison inmates? What number are you at? I'm at 89. Or maybe it's California being a trillion dollars in debt, 90. Could it be Gavin seeking billions of dollars in collateralized loans from China? Or maybe it's California's billions of dollars in unfunded pension liabilities. Could it be the draconian environmental policies killing entire industries? Or is it the business crushing regulations forcing thousands of businesses out of California? Could it be that Gavin oversaw California's first population decline in state history? Or maybe it's the unchecked voter fraud, unclean voter rolls, mandatory mail-in voting, and a terribly flawed motor voter system. 
Could it be Gavin reporting fraudulent COVID numbers to not hurt his approval rating? Or is it California requiring all state employees to show proof of vaccination or be tested weekly? Is it Gavin mandating vaccines for all healthcare workers? Or my, the, the most heinous one, or maybe it's Gavin Newsom putting COVID patients into nursing homes. Or is it all the above? Take a wild guess. Oh my God. Let's recall Gavin Newsom. Thank you, Earl. Well, uh, I understand that Larry is in the building. So I don't know where, but that's the rumor. So uh, we are going to ask Pastor Joe to come up here and bless this little rally that we're having. Because even though thousands of people may be live streaming this, we're a little short on people here, but that's okay. Because live streaming and you're all here and what most matters is that we're all supporting Larry and we're gonna vote yes tomorrow, right? Yes. Pastor Joe. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. Let's pray. Lord God, we just, we lift up this gathering here. We lift up the state of California. And Lord, we do ask that there would be a change Lord, you said in your word, where the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. And Lord, we thank you for Larry Elder. We thank you. He stands for freedom, freedom of speech, freedom of religion. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that uh, he stands up for things that are real and true. So Lord, we lift up this rally. We ask, Lord, that you would just work mightily here in our midst. Lord, we ask that you would put it on the hearts of the people here in this beautiful, wonderful state that we live in, Lord. And Lord, we ask that you would, Lord, just work mightily. God, we thank you so much for Larry Elder. We thank you, Lord, that you've given him a brilliant mind. And we thank you that he stands up for the sanctity of life, Lord God. Lord, we pray that you would just work mightily here in our midst, God. We pray even as Larry comes up to speak, that you would just bless him. Lord, we pray that, Lord, this state would turn around and this state would seek you first, God. We pray for just a true revival in this land. May you work mightily, God. Thank you, God, for your grace. Thank you for your mercies that are new every single morning. Great is your faithfulness, Lord. So, Lord, we look to you. We ask, Lord, we, we, we don't even look at the polls because we're looking to you, Lord. Lord, you, your word tells us you raise up some and you take others down. Lord, we pray that you would take down the current government here. And we ask, Lord, in Jesus' name, that you would raise up godly men, men that want truth, men that stand for freedom, Lord. Lord, even our founding fathers, they said, give us, give us freedom or give us death. Lord, we ask that this state would be set free and you would start with Larry Elder in this race that ye, Lord God, you would cause him to win. So we just lift this up to you. Thank you, Lord, that you hear these prayers. Thank you, Lord, that we look to you. And Lord God, we just lift up our time. Bless our time together, we pray. And all God's people said, amen. amen. God bless you guys. I think this is a good time to also thank the great Mike Lindell from MyPillow.com. He has been a true patriot in all of this, fighting for election integrity. In that promo code RSPN and you'll get up to 66% off your entire order and it's more important than ever that we support people like Mike Lindell and companies that support conservative values and MyPillow is definitely uh, one of those companies. So go to the website MyPillow.com and put in the promo code RSPN and receive up to 66% off your entire order. Now this is important that we help the election integrity process, which which Mike Lindell has been in the forefront of all of this. This is a David versus Goliath situation, not only between Mike Lindell and what's going on with voter integrity, but also we're talking about 
uh, the media. You know, we're, we're trying to cover this whole California recall effort here with Larry Elder and get him into office. And it takes a lot of resources. So if you would please contribute. And when you buy something with at MyPillow.com, a portion of those proceeds goes right back to helping our network. So I just encourage you right now, the time is to fight. Go to MyStore.com as well. And let's contribute to freedom. We'll take it back to the stage. Why isn't somebody stopping these people? Stop CAfraud.com. It's on our website, electelder.com. It's stop CAfraud.com. You go on there, you sign a petition f so that when we have the affidavits, we can take it to court or whoever they take these things to. And, and a petition of people saying we want the election investigated. We want the fraud investigated. And then whatever fraud you witnessed, you sign an affidavit. And that affidavit is an electronic affidavit and it is good as having a notarized affidavit. So go on, I can't say it enough, stop cafraud.com. And we really have to, because this is ridiculous. How many people here have gone, brought in their ballot, and when you deliver it, they say, oh, well, you've already voted. Uh, yeah, no, I haven't. I have my ballot in my hand. How could I have voted? I'm going to go tomorrow, and if they say that to me, I'm going to say, I want to see my ballot. I want to see who I voted for. I'm not going to do a provisional. I want to see my ballot. You say I voted. I want proof. Right now, I want proof. Don't let these people intimidate you or, you know, whatever they try to do, which is... Make, you, make us all crazy and give up. We're not giving up. Right. I, I was born, I'm a fifth generation Californian and I do not want to move. This morning we were talking to my family about, you know, God forbid something happens. What are we going to do? And I said, I can't leave. I can't leave my, I can't leave my state. You know, blue, I, I grew up with blue puffy clouds in San Gabriel Valley. They're not blue puffy clouds there anymore. But anyway, um, I, I grew up in this beautiful state, and I do not want to leave. I don't want to be one of those people that just walk away. I want to make it happen. And Larry Elder is the one who's going to make it happen. And we have got, we have got this, go home, go on our website, sign up for I360, make phone calls tomorrow, walk, walk, give. If you don't have any of our handouts, just go knock on doors and say, You've got to go. If you haven't voted, you've got to go vote because we need Larry Elder. We need to get rid of Newsom. This man has destroyed our state. So, Lionel, do I see Lionel back there? Let's see. Lionel? Mm, this is not him. Anyway, I thought maybe he was him with, with, uh, with Larry. So, I don't know. Security, where's Larry? Is he coming? Yes. <laughs> Somebody said yes. So we know he's coming. Uh, let's just. Uh, cheers. OK, cheers. Go ahead. Cheer. All right. We are just moments away from Larry Elder uh, taking the stage here. Welcome. We are live here in Costa Mesa, California, getting ready for Larry Elder. And of course, the uh, big election takes place tomorrow. Uh, September the 14th, statewide, uh, the election is tomorrow. So I would imagine that a lot of anticipation for this event as this has been building months and months. Of course, we were in Ventura uh, a while back with the uh, recall efforts and the, to just to get this on the ballot. Uh, so here we are in Costa Mesa, California, uh, on the eve of what would be a the second time that a governor here in California has been recalled. Back in 2003, Gray Davis was recalled. And of course, after that, California got the great Arnold Schwarzenegger as their governor at that point. So this would be the second time in the history of California that the governor has been recalled. And I think many people said that at that point, the condition of California was very different than it was today. Uh, of course, far well, you know, worse today than it was back in 03. So we'll see if we can talk to some people here. Might want to uh, talk to us and see. Ma'am, let me get you right over here for a second, ma'am. 
Well, we'll talk to you. We're live on the air of Right Side Broadcasting Network, and we support, of course, the uh, recall efforts of Gavin Newsom. We support Larry Elder. I heard you up there getting emotional and vocal. What were you saying? I was just uh, doing something else. To let everyone know, this victory is ours. It's for the taking. It's our victory to lose. We need not be somber because there are a few of us. We are few, but we are strong. This is our victory to have. We're looking forward to taking back this state, to saving this state, and sending a ripple across the United States that all hope is not lost. What's one of the biggest issues for you, why you support Larry Elder, and why Governor Newsom should be recalled? Um, I think, I feel like, well, I know he should be recalled because we know we are trying to save this um, country from turning into a third world nation. California is usually the starting point. Mm -hmm. And if we allow this person to destroy the state of California, it'll be easy to go to the next state and the next state is it's like a cancer. Yeah. But at the same time, if we can recall Gavin Newsom, it, it, that same thing would happen, that we would have that same um, issue that it would spread and they'll let other people know that they can fight it. We can get Gavin Newsom out, we can get an incompetent governor out, other states can do the same also. Let's talk about the media real quickly. And there's been a lot of brainwashing in our youth uh, to, to think that any kind of conservative or Republican is bad news for, for our country. And of course, I think they've done that with Larry Elder. I mean, the fact that California can have their first black governor in history is newsworthy. It's, it's a headline, but yet you're not seeing that from the mainstream media. What does it mean to you as an Afri African-American woman to potentially have your first black governor of California? It's very exciting to have a conservative black governor. Mm -hmm. We had one black leader in very high office that for me was very disappointed, mm -hmm. disappointing, mm -hmm. ushered in socialism. And mm -hmm. we're seeing the effects of that. But Larry Elder can help turn that tide back from socialism, give us back the opportunity to achieve the American dream. If you've heard Larry's platform, everything he's doing mm -hmm. is elevating we the working class, black, brown, whites, all of the working class of Americans. Mm -hmm. That's who Larry Elder is and that's what he can do for us if we support him. Now, as far as the media, they're afraid of conservatives like myself yeah. and blacks because, and they need to suppress us because it is catching. People will respond. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, you guys break the mold of what uh, you should traditionally vote for. You cannot be a conservative and be black or Hispanic or any other uh, race or, or even identify as, as from the LBGTQ community that you simply can't. You got to stay in your lane. You guys obviously, God bless you guys are stepping out of that. And yes, we can be conservative and step out of our lane as long as we're not fearful. And we are not fearful, but courageous and determined. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a question because you guys are, are, are local. Have you met anybody that supports uh, the efforts to basically keep Newsom back in, in office? Have you, anybody's going to vote no. Have you met anybody that's, that's against the recall? Only from a distance. Okay. And that... Um, so you have to find it. Well, yes, and that resistance, they know not to come too close because they're going to get just overwashed with support for Larry Elder and reasons to recall Newsom. In facts, I mean, he's talking about the economy, we're talking about crime, we're talking about the homeless, we're talking about the cost of living, we're talking about things that are very relevant to everybody. Uh, this has no, uh, there's no identity politics in this. This is just common sense. We all want a safe place to live. And if, if you don't have a safe place, place if your crime is high then everything else is and just is negated because we need a safe place to live absolutely and for people that think most african americans or brown people are careless or don't take an interest in their country we really do we're not mindless and we're not all a, a monolith of, pe of voters we're not at all there are many black people like myself many brown people like myself but we are censored out from the media and many of us are laying in wait waiting to come out to show that support we are all praying for larry elder right now and of course he's going to take the stage here momentarily i'll let you guys get in position god bless you guys for taking time to talk to me thank you so much they thank you they want us to stay in our place, um, black people, because they need a base, a voting base. Yep. That's the reason why, and I'm going to let you know the young on the street, that's why the borders are wide open now, because it's, they need more people to support their base. And basically, what they've been holding us is it's like a modern day slavery. Yeah. And we haven't even talked about immigration, but yeah, it's out of control here. I'm based in Texas. I see exactly what it's doing to our state. And I imagine it's doing the same thing in California. Yes, they want to broaden their voting base. Um, 
They wanted and Nancy Pelosi in 2019. I remember, remember her saying in Congress, anybody in this state, whether legal or not, should have the right to vote. Yeah. When she said that in 2019, I heard her say that I knew then that, that we we're going to have problems them. with the borders. Yeah, yeah. Once they got back in power. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would imagine. I'm just throwing Trump supporters. I would imagine both of you guys. No. Yes. Definitely. Vote. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Proudly, Proudly. unashamedly. That's right. That's right. What do you think, real quickly? Because I'm starting to find out that Trump has far more support than we ever thought in the state of California. Mm -hmm. Just from your inner circle and what you saw during the campaign season, mm -hmm. California is redder than we, what we think. As quietly as it's kept, mm -hmm. it's very red. They mm -hmm. must cheat, and that's why they're continuing to cheat, because they're oppressing the yeah. will of the people. Mm -hmm. Look at you guys. God bless. And hopefully, I can't wait to, I can't wait to see you tomorrow night when hopefully Larry Elder uh, takes the victory here. But that's just thank you so much. That's just a, that's just a, what you're seeing here uh, at this event. Now, this was for volunteers and people that were involved uh, with the campaign on on uh, many levels. We've had uh, PR people, we've got door knockers, people who were in charge of uh, you know passing out flyers and and, and signs around town. So this is kind of a, a rally for them. Them. I want to bring you in. Let's see. I'm going to come in and talk to me real quick. Yeah. A, I got to say, I got to say, you've got the uh, most interesting pair of shoes in the whole <laughs> building there. I love those. I love what you have there. It's a little fashion segment here. Why should Larry Elder be the next uh, governor of California? Uh, because he has the interest of the American people, and especially for California being our That's native state. Oh, okay. Oh. No, okay. That's okay. They're just taking a picture. Um, <laughs> why, why do you think people gravitate toward him so much? Uh, because he's the, the, as they say, the next generation are the Zoomers, the Boomers, and now we have the uh, Generationers. So he is more at the level of their understanding, more than Governor Newsom from my perspective of it, from what has happened in the past to what is happening now. There is an elevation change from uh, the... Okay, let's see. We got to... Let's, let's turn to the podium real quick. Let's see what they're going to say. want him to come talk to us so he'll be here very very shortly they're trying to move him on okay just getting a so brief update, update on his arrival i know that he's got a lot of press today obviously he's been all over uh the state of california last uh, really the last couple months he's been all over the place uh today so he will be taking the states here shortly so what we're going to say is what is the number one thing that people don't like about Newsom? What, was there one thing for, as a Californian that really stuck out to you that you said, that's it, uh, this guy's got to go? Um, other than the homelessness has been the biggest issue that I've watched from Venice Beach all the way to the Inland Area and Inland Empire has been the biggest impact that needs attention immediately. And, and Newsom has not had a good handle on the situation of transferring homeless from the beaches or parks or recreational facilities mm -hmm. into actual living establishments to give them a better fresh start. So I, I'm, I'm all for the vets as my son's Marine. And uh, so the servicemen uh, do that have the medical coverage but not a home to even mm -hmm. take care of themselves in is just appalling and needs to change immediately. Yeah, it needs to change immediately. And of course, we'll be here tomorrow night in this room. As the, this is for Victory Party. It's, it's scheduled for here. So hopefully uh, things go our way and we we're able to do that. So we'll be right back here tomorrow. Um, feeling pretty good about it? Yes, um, yeah. I'm actually feeling very confident or else I wouldn't be in the room with these yeah. lovely people that encourage uh, Larry in his endeavors for yeah. governor yeah. of California. Yeah. Right Thank you for taking a couple moments to talk to us. I appreciate that. Keep those shoes up. Looking looking good over there. There you go. Uh, real quickly, I want to thank one of our partners today. I love my freedom.com. I love my freedom Dot com. They are a brand new partner of our network, and we want to encourage all of you to go check them out under the website. They've got some great patriotic theme apparel. They've got all kinds of things that really tie back to what you and I really believe in. Love of country, love of family, love of God. And I want to encourage everyone to go to ilovemyfreedom.com and put that promo code in. RSBN and get special offers. They've got a buy one, get one as well that's on there. I love my freedom. 
Shopify.com. They got specials on there. If you want free shipping, if you want a special discount code, make sure you put that RSPN in there at checkout and you'll receive all those promo discounts that are applicable to what you're buying. I love my freedom.com. I love my freedom.com. Uh, welcome. We are live here in Costa Mesa, California. For just now joining us, this is the uh, really kind of the last rally for Larry Elder before election day tomorrow, September 14th in the great state of California. Of course, this has gone back for months as it took to get this recall effort, get enough signatures to actually put this on the ballot. Let me walk you through the process here. Tomorrow, when Californians go to the poll, there are two questions on there. The first question is, do you support the recall efforts of Gavin Newsom? If your answer is yes, then the second question is, okay, then if not Gavin Newsom, who? Now, there's 40-something candidates on that list. And, of course, we've had uh, Caitlyn Jenner that we met at CPAC, obviously was one of the most noteworthy, I guess, celebrity-based names that was on there. But then outside of that, the most serious candidate on that list, no doubt, has been Larry Elder, longtime conservative host, business owner, attorney, longtime resident of California, really a native of South Central LA, and has really worked himself up uh, to be such a pillar of success, uh, not only in uh, his industry, but in the state of California. So the first question is, do you support the recall efforts of Gavin Newsom? If the answer is yes, the second question has to be Larry Elder. If he gets 51% plus one vote, the recall is over and Gavin Newsom will be recalled. Now, as we know with elections, you look at these early polls and I don't really buy in the information that you're seeing right now in the media in regards to how many people support uh, this recall efforts. The grassroots is where it's won. And we have talked to many people uh, the last months as we kind of done surveys on social media People here in the state of California have told me they think this is going to happen. There's enough people in California that are fed up with the high crime, the drug problem, the immigration, the cost of living, the taxes. You combine all of this, and it doesn't matter what party you affiliate yourself with, that you've got to see change in this state. Larry Elder for governor. Let's go ahead and turn it over to the uh, podium, get a few words for what she's saying, and we'll come back with some more interviews. Most of the people who get money nowadays, it's all tied up in bureaucracy. It's not in actually helping the guys. It's not, they, they don't actually see the money. I mean, you don't want to give them the money, but uh, you have to give it to it in services. And Larry's idea of nonprofits and churches, that's the way to go. That's the way to go. Because these bureaucracies, are, is, they eat up 80% of the money and doesn't get down to the services. So... I, as one person, know one of the reasons I'm supporting him is because of his stance on homelessness and because he listens. He sat there and he listened to my guys tell him how they went from homelessness. We were eating in a barbecued restaurant in Lake Forest. If you ever go there, it's called Texas Barbecue. And the man who owns it used to be one of my veterans. And now he owns his own restaurant. So, so wonderful. So, um, I don't know how else to kill time. Uh, <laughs> like I said, I wish I could soft shoe or sing. Does anybody else want to sing? Does anybody have a good voice wants to sing something? Some, you know, Yankee Doodle or something? You what? Oh, good one. Can you sing that? All right, while we wait for Larry Elder, we are moments away from him arriving. Um, I've got a couple ladies here from Southern California, I would presume. Let's see if we can, uh, let's get her right over here. Let's get, oh, I'm so sorry, <laughs> as we play bumper cars here. Uh, I just didn't want to break the camera. Okay, so tell me your name, uh, why you guys are here. Uh, my name is Colleen Darling, and I'm here to support Larry Elder. And we've kind of started out on this journey from like the, the first recall we tried to get it going, walking around our, our stores in the area, and nobody wanted to sign. So the second recall came up, and we are like, yes, we're on it. Because we're fighting for our grandkids. Yeah. 
you know, that's what was that's one of the things that really pushed you guys to Larry Elder. I know there's a, like 40 something candidates in, in, in that are, you know, vying for uh, to be governor. But what was it about Larry Elder that stuck out to you guys? Well, he didn't have to be vetted. You know, we had a short amount of time and we didn't have to vet him. He's known. You can go on, listen to his podcast. He's very consistent in his conservative ideas. And uh, he aligns with our values and the things that, you know, are, that we want to see happen in the state of California. So. Right. What is wrong with California? In your opinion, what is one of the biggest reasons why you needed to change your leadership here? Um, first of all, to get rid of this awful governor because of what he's doing to our children, number one, because of our grandchildren and um, just the businesses, the small businesses here that have been, the business owners that have been hurt, they're losing their businesses, especially because of what he's done through COVID, that and the education and what he's done to our children and the, the sex education that's been brought in. It's tearing this state, that's, but that's only one of what, 300, that's only a, just a few. So yeah, he's out. We're getting a new governor. He's out. We're, he's out. We're governor. celebrating tomorrow night. Tomorrow yeah, we night. are going to celebrate tomorrow night. Let's talk about immigration. I live in the state of Texas. A big issue there in Texas is immigration. How about you guys? I mean, is it on, is it on the top three or four? And you know, yes, it is. And you know what? We love uh, the immigrants. We do. We just want it to be done legally. You know, I mean, we love them being here. We are a melting pot. That's what all this is about. But we're not about it being illegal. We want to know who's coming into our country and, you know, what makes sure that they have good intentions towards us. Yeah. You know? I think the time also, and I said this earlier, the last time a California governor was recalled was back in 2003. We had Gray Davis in office. And what we got from that was an Arnold Schwarzenegger mm -hmm. administration, not the best governor here in California at all. I think we can all I can agree with that. So this is a time for California to kind of hit reset, reset on all yeah. this and get somebody in office uh, that is a true conservative, yeah. that is... Uh, uh, and you know, I'll tell you what, you guys are obviously all fans with, with him on his radio show. There's probably, I would love to see Larry Elder debate anybody oh, out there because he no, just, he's just amazing. He's a flamethrower when it comes to this. Yeah, he, nobody compares to him. Even I heard a statement from Candace Owens and she's a good debater and she said, no, I wouldn't even want to debate him, you yeah. know, so yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Uh, in your circle of friends, are you seeing a lot of uh, recall? I've been kind of polling people since I've got to California the last couple of days ago, and of course, uh, asking people, "Hey, what's your th what's your thoughts on this?" They all think that Gavin Newsom is gone, oh, despite yeah. what oh, despite yeah. what you might see from the mainstream media. Oh, yeah. He's gone, and as of tomorrow night, eight o'clock, we're getting a new governor. Yeah. Can you? And it's going to be Larry Elder. You, you know. just watch. Yep. And we um, actually were out on street corners, yeah. you know, and holding up signs and doing recalls, having people sign up. We had so many people honking, giving thumbs up, stopping. It was like a party. Yeah. you know atmosphere and we did it for many many week, weeks in a row yeah. so this is exciting for us we feel like we've been in from the very get-go and now we can't believe we get to stand here and watch this and tomorrow is going to be so exciting yeah. we were in ventura at one of those uh recall newsome rallies and I, we started to see a lot of a momentum at that point about that i can't believe i'm standing in this in this ballroom right now in costa mesa california on september 13th uh you know getting ready to, to do this thing it's finally here we're gonna do it yeah did did you uh, did you guys get to uh, tape all the things the list that the guy read off for the hundred yeah. things? Yeah, yeah it's, it's, a, it's amazing. You know, all the all of the he needs to be arrested. Yeah. Like I mean, listening to that list, I'm thinking, why is he not arrested? Did you see the press conference yesterday with Rose McGowan? Did you yeah, see that? I did. What's your I did. thoughts on that? My thoughts on that is it's about time people start speaking up because I, I believe this has been going on for a long time. And I, I'm so proud of her. You know, like, like thank you. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I even said if you support women's rights and you're against uh, the sexual abuse and all that that, that monster uh, represented, how in the world can you put a vote in? for Gavin Newsom, just what you just heard. You can't put a vote in, no. So that's why tomorrow it's gonna be, I think people are gonna be shocked what happens tomorrow. And we get, yeah. And I also think, you it's know. Gonna it's gonna take you back to 2016 when Trump won. It's gonna be the big shot. Exactly what's gonna happen. Remember 2016, we all thought, no, Trump isn't gonna win. They did not, they did not anticipate the people coming out. That's what's gonna happen tomorrow. And Larry Elder is going to win. Just yes. watch. He is. It's exciting. So we're 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 ready, exciting. and we're actually having a party tomorrow yes. night. So we're we already gonna... got a cake. We already got the cake. <laughs> we got cake. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna I'm, I'm scheduled to be here, but if you what flavor cake, and I might switch.
ditch my plans real quick and come see you ladies. Well, thank you so much. And for someone who I lived in California, uh, mid nineties to mid two thousands, loved it down here in Orange County. But as I would come back and visit, uh, especially in the Los Angeles area and the Northern California, it is a very different scene than it was here enough from not too long ago. Yeah, it is, but we are gonna restore California. You know, the prayers hope, of the righteous. Right? The prayers oh, yeah. of the righteous. Yep. So and I tell you what's going to be great is you're going to recall Gavin Newsom here. You're going to get Larry uh, Elder. And guess what? Your neighbor to the right is going to get Carrie Lake. You're going to get a fantastic governor there in Arizona. And you're going to have two solid governors here in the desert southwest. And it's going to be, I think that's a good beginning uh, to what could be an epic 2024. Me too. And wait till you see who we get for Secretary of State. Rachel Ham. Rachel Ham. Wait till Rachel Ham makes Rachel Secretary Ham of State. Rachel Ham is it. Watch. Watch. You, watch. you heard it first right here. I first I've heard that. Rachel Ham. Yep. Right. It's gonna be Rachel yes. Ham. Yep. Yes. We're putting our full support behind her. All right. Also on the uh, on the uh, infrastructure bill, I heard today that if that gets passed, the taxes here in California could go up to your personal income tax could go up to sixty percent. And I just let that sit in for a second. 60%. How can anybody, any company, uh, make it here? Yeah, we both own companies. So, yeah, it's like, no, we can't do that. You know, the, is it their plan to destroy every company? You know, and I, I, it has to be. It has to be part of the plan. All right, so I know our viewers are wondering, what flavor cake do we have at home for tomorrow night's victory party? I want to know. Do you want to know, really? <laughs> Confetti. <laughs> We just canceled our plans here. We're going to your house. Yeah, good. Really, truly, the best really is yet to come. Yeah. It truly is. Yep. You know, we it's serve coming. an awesome God, and it's coming. you know the best is yet it's to come. It's a resurgence. It's a yeah. it's a it's a spiritual revival in this country. It really is. Yeah. It really is. We we have a group of women that we 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 meet with on a weekly basis. We do a war room. I mean, we bring all this before the Lord. So we're like. You know, we're on it. Awesome. Yeah. Well, God bless you guys for coming out here. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. There we go. Live right here in Costa Mesa. A couple supporters there. As we wait for uh, Larry Elder to take the stage here, he's been doing a lot of media today. And, of course, it's a lot going on uh, in the last couple of days. You had that incident in uh, Venice uh, Beach of him being assaulted. Uh, by a uh, by a protester with an egg, and of course that got a little bit of media attention, but not as much as you would think it would get. All right, let's take a break and let's talk about our friends over at MyPillow.com. Now, Mike Lindell has been a true fighter and patriot when it comes to election integrity, and right now this is a David versus Goliath type matchup we have in our country. So we're encouraging everybody right now to go to MyPillow.com and put in that promo code RSBN at checkout and get up to 66% off. You go to MyStore.com as well. I always say this, drive around your neighborhood, check out what houses have a flag in their front yard, perhaps a American flag sticker on your vehicle. And if you don't have one, go to MyStore.com and buy one. I think it's the most patriotic thing that you can do right now to send a message to our society and to your neighbors of who you support and what you stand for. That American flag right now means more than ever. And it's important that you display all those conservative values and just be proud to be American. So I just want to encourage everybody to go to MyPillow.com. MyPillow.com. Put that promo code RSBN at checkout and get up to 66% off your entire order. And Mike Lindell has been a great partner of this network from the very beginning. It seems like on the Trump campaign, he has been the person that really stuck his neck out there after the election and tried to you know, get the train going in the right direction as far as election integrity. So it's up to us to help support him as well. And there's been a massive cancellation on his company, on his employees. And this is one way that you can fight back on that. Go to mypillow.com, put that promo code RSBN at checkout and you'll get up to 66% off. If you're just now joining us, we're live in Costa Mesa at the Hilton right here in Orange County, just off the 405 and the 55, kind of where that meets, down by the South Coast Plaza area shopping center here in Orange County. Beautiful day here uh, in the Southland. And of course, we are all waiting for tomorrow as the polls open up for in-person voting uh, for the recall of Gavin Newsom. And to kind of recount and replay the steps here with this recall, it's quite simple. There's two questions on the ballot. 
The first question is, do you support the recall efforts of Gavin Newsom? If your answer is yes, the second question is then, well, then who takes, uh, who replaces Governor Gavin Newsom? And at that point, it becomes the person with the most votes. It doesn't have to be any certain percentage of votes, just has to be the person with the most votes. And Larry Elder, uh, as of lately, has a double digit lead in that category. Now, if for some reason you vote no, you don't support the efforts of recalling Gavin Newsom, that's it. There is no second question. Now, in order to move Gavin Newsom out of office, this is what has to happen. He has to have 50% of the people say that they support the recall efforts plus one vote. So you got 50% plus one vote. And these ladies talked about earlier, it seems like that's not that difficult to do considering the environment that's been going on here in California for quite some time, the destruction of this beautiful state, not economically. At one point, this was the fifth largest economy in the world. And uh, we have it still remains a top economy in the world, but by all you know measures, uh, businesses are fleeing and people are fleeing from this state and go into states like Arizona, like Texas, like Florida, and many other states in the South. So in order to stop the bleeding of businesses exiting the state, we've got to turn it around uh, fiscally and get that back in order. Crime has been another major category here in Southern California and in Northern California in particular, and some of the big cities, San Francisco, San Diego, and Los Angeles, crime is an issue here. And the lack of pursuance of people breaking the law I had someone describe to me earlier how that works. If you walk into a store and you steal something of $900 or less in value, quite honestly, you can fill up the shopping cart and you can walk right out. Uh, and there's there's no one getting arrested there. There's, not, there's no citations. And so business owners are fed up of actually being uh, basically on the, on the hook of covering uh, all the stolen g goods that they have and all the, the monetary value of all of that. So crime is an issue, homelessness is an issue, and of course taxes is an issue as well. Let me step aside, show the scene. We've got a, probably at one point, maybe about 100 people in here, and these are all just uh, volunteers uh, uh, that have assembled here and uh, to basically voice their support. Now, on the other side of this curtain, I don't know if you can probably see it, Gage, but if we swing all the way uh, to your right, view or left, there is a black curtain. Let me walk over here and I'll show you exactly uh, what I'm talking about on the other side of this black curtain is where you're going to have the victory party tomorrow night will be on the other side of this. Now this opens up to an entirely huge ballroom where they're going to have stage uh, speakers and of course get all the election results that will be coming through uh, tomorrow night. And we're going to have live coverage of that starting at eight o'clock here on the West Coast. So it's gonna be a late night for you guys that live uh, out uh, on the East Coast or maybe in the central time zone. But nevertheless, this is a very big election uh, going on right now. Let me see if I can talk to some more supporters over here. So as we walk around this room waiting for Larry Elder to speak, can we talk to you guys about your recall efforts? Let me say, turn around here. Yeah, we can, both of you guys. But, uh, we're, we're live on the air, Right Side Broadcasting Network. I don't know if you know if you're uh, familiar with this. Am, you're, yes. you're okay, great. All right, wonderful. Um, so why why Larry Elder, and and why get rid of Newsom? Well, wow, this is a, you're like how much time do I have for this, right? Um, Larry Elder. We'll start with my son Braden. He just started really liking him, um, and we got a, we have a state to save. Yeah. You know, we have a business, and um, we are fortunately not affected, but I have friends that were affected and no longer have their businesses, and Larry was a good candidate. So we've been supporting, he's been volunteering for him, and yeah. So so. Volunteer-wise, what did you do for Larry? Cold calling, so I did, I did phone calls. So I'm only 19, and I go to Cypress College, if nobody knows about Cypress College, um, but I do phone calls for him right now, currently. Currently. Okay, we'll just, She's still waiting. Okay, they're still waiting for Larry Elder to take the stage. Okay, so you were cold calling. Now, what was the percentage of people that would say, I support the recall efforts from you, from what you gauged? So I've done over maybe, maybe I'd say 400, 300 phone calls and 98% support. You have, you know, the usual hang-ups because it's telemarketing, but at the same time, it was 98% support. Are these random phone calls? Are these from, like, Republican banks, or is this just random? So we target certain ages and certain uh, demographics, and we have... 
I'd say very much random from different areas all across California. And it was just, it was a great support on the phone calls. Definitely. As a business owner, what did Gavin Newsom do to small and medium sized businesses? He ruined them. Absolutely ruined them. It's horrible. So Larry's our guy. Yeah. Absolutely. I know that COVID set a lot of small businesses out. I mean, they did. COVID definitely did. But I think before COVID, Newsom, he's just horrible. Let's talk about taxes real quickly. I'm always amazed how anybody in Southern California can afford to live uh, on, on what the wages are right now between affordable housing, uh, the gasoline. I mean, we're going to, by the way, if you're watching us outside the state of California, gasoline here, uh, the average gallon of gasoline in the Los Angeles area, Southern California is 440. That is up quite a bit from just last year. Yeah, I remember last year, honestly, it was like 216. During COVID, obviously. Yeah. Now, you know, 469 today for my car. And you look at, go to Needles, California, that's in between two states. It was at $6 at one point during the past couple of weeks. $6, that's unheard of. Yeah, and, didn't, uh, and President Trump said at that point that that was going to happen. You're going to have 6 7 $8 a gallon uh, gas. And of course, if you look at the amount of taxes that's put on a gallon of gasoline, uh, that drives it up quite a bit and that's the reason why you need to change leadership in the state because he has put a lot of unneeded taxes on that absolutely absolutely we talk about immigration is that something that touches you guys at all I understand it. yes i do i understand immigration and you know one thing is larry elder yes he's a libertarian republican too at the same time he wants to secure the border that's what we need we have pockets of people coming through our border like it's no we've never seen before and those people obviously don't need a vaccine right so but we do so it's just the hypocrisy that we have and um larry elder's He's got a big charge, but at the same time, he's the man for the job. I also think the hypocrisy of uh, the, the education system and our kids and the school choice. And, and I mean, he's in college and he's been having issues already in college. And I've got friends with little babies. They are, you know, first, second, third grade. And they're teaching just horrible things for the kids right now. The whole critical race theory is just horrible. We just need to get rid of that. I'll give you an example. So I go to Cypress College and we had an incident at my college where I supported cops and I took the video and sent it out to the nation. They saw it. So for another example is in college, you can't say the word guys because it's deemed sexist. You couldn't clap because it's too aggressive in my class. And that's the things that we're being taught in the college classroom that we're paying for. So it's so sad. Sad. And of course, a lot of people look at California and you have a chance to change things here and other states that may think it's impossible for change. You can quite honestly make that change. It starts tomorrow. Uh, did you guys already vote yet? Or you Absolutely. We voted last weekend. Yes. What's, what is your opinion on some of the mail outs, the mailing discrepancies that have been kind of in the news the last day or so? Well, I think we have a KTLA reporter over here that mentioned it. And, uh, you know, there was a lady, there was an older lady that came in and said, I'm here to vote. And she said, Woodland Hills, I believe. Right? Correct. It was El Camino uh, High School. She goes in and says, I'm here to vote. She said, oh, you've already voted. And then she says, the, the, the lady that's uh, voting, she says, are you serious? And then the polling person says, we've been having to deal with this all day. And she's like, are you serious? So... There was a speaker before, and she says, i like to see who I vote for, not do a provisional. Okay, you said I voted. Who did I vote for? I'd like to see that. So, you know, I'm only 19. This is not Republican, Democrat. It's just common sense things. It's common sense. Yeah, I, really, I, I agree, and I think that when you look at some of the problems here in California, it does come down to a common sense approach to things. And I think that's maybe why Larry Elder is so loved, because he does have a very unique way of, 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 of kind of positioning topics that are easy to understand through his communication skills. I think he's a, I mean, he's a great communicator to begin with. Yes, he is. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and, you know, he's very good at marketing. When he does Fox News interviews, throw a little something in the tip jar. You know, go to electelder.com five times, and he's very good at that. So um, I don't want to hear Newsom's voice anymore. Hopefully we can get rid of him tomorrow, and I think we will. God bless you guys. Thanks for uh, cold calling. You talk about a tough job. There's a lot of companies that are probably going to hire you for being a cold caller there. That's a very tough job. So thank you so much. What city do you guys live in, by the way? We live in Long Beach. Okay, Long Beach. All right. Oh, and you just had Biden there today. Well, let me just talk. The um, Trump supporters are out there right now. Okay, I I heard because of the attendance here was less than what we thought it would be. 
Um, and a lot of people said that it was because Larry Elder's people were over there. Yes, my daughter's over there right now, and and my husband, and everybody's out there with their flags. What was the traffic like getting from Long Beach to here? I know that they were shutting down some roads there in the area for him. Right, so we, we, the downtown area is a little bit more shut down, but you have the event currently at Long Beach City College. But if you go on the intersection, it's Biden cheated, Trump won. So what you're saying is Trump supporters right now, are they're taking over. They're taking over Long Beach City College right now. <laughs> Does that surprise you at all? That, no. that, that's a, no. no, not at all. No. no. And of course, you've seen the viral videos of, uh, you know, F Joe Biden. I mean, you know, all over. I there's not a college game we haven't seen. We even saw the Yankees and the uh, Mets play in the Subway Series yesterday. I mean, do you ever think we'd be in this position seven months or eight months into a Biden administration? The only thing I ask people is, and I'm, your broadcast network knows the best, 81 million votes? Come on, that's a joke. You, th that's not true. I love, I love the videos when people go into a restaurant and say, where are where, where are the Joe Biden voters? Where, where, where are we at? And, and, and it seems like no, he, they're, they're nowhere. No, and you know, yes, people voted for him, correct, but... You saw those rallies with the circles and the tape. They he, they put media there instead, and Trump was gaining thousands and thousands of people. And currently, right now, we have Larry Elder supporters at Long Beach City College taking over Biden. I think that's, I think that's so funny, uh, which we don't care that there's not a thousand people packed in this room right now. The only thing we care tomorrow. tomorrow yeah. The only thing we care right now is that tomorrow Californians get up. If you have not voted yet, you get up in the morning and you got to vote yes on question number one. And then the rest of it, fill in a Larry Elder and fill it in. So. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. God bless you. Guys. God bless you guys out there, uh, trooper. So uh, here's here's the deal, guys. Tomorrow it goes down. Of course, we're going to be live here in Costa Mesa at the uh, Hilton off of the uh, 405 and the 55 here in Orange County at the Victory Party tomorrow. That kicks off at eight o'clock here, and that's kind of when some of the results start to trickle in uh, with this recall efforts. Now, don't be discouraged that if you see stuff early tomorrow that have, uh, for whatever reason, uh, this recall effort failing, uh, don't let that discourage you at all. Think back earlier, we had someone talk about the 2016 presidential election and what exactly happened there. That was a shock. Going into that election, they had uh, Hillary Clinton up big time uh, for that. And of course, we know how that uh, turned out. So I just want to encourage everybody to uh, get out and vote and, and, and take the day off if you have to, for crying out loud. This is important here uh, in the state of California. And if you live uh, in you know, some of these neighboring states that have been getting some of the people fleeing uh, California, this is what you want to happen. You need this recall to happen to stop the exodus in California, going to states like Texas, Colorado, Arizona, Nevada, Florida, uh, any state other than uh, California is where they want to go. And by the way, if you're looking for a U-Haul or to rent a truck to move out of California, it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you big time. I just saw an article the other day that it's almost at an all-time high, some of these U-Haul rentals of people trying to leave California. There is a shortage of moving vans in this state, and it's because people are moving out and going to Texas and California states like that. Uh, people still here, a little bit of a media here. I know we've got some mainstream media in the room as well covering this story as the, um, obviously, uh, this has major implications. You turn on any major network right now, they're talking about this California recall. And what they're also talking about, just late today, President Trump sent out a message talking about uh, potential voter discrepancies and the mailing ballots and the drop boxes and all the things that were implemented uh, by Governor Newsom in terms of, in regards to the COVID Delta precautions and just keeping everybody, quote, safe, end quote. Um, and so you're starting to see a little bit of that chatter as well. And of course, that, you know, anytime President Trump says anything like that, the media just runs with. So that's been one of the lead stories uh, this afternoon on that. But we don't want anything like that to discourage you from voting and getting out and doing uh, your patriotic duty. Let me see if we can walk around here and talk to some more people. Um, you know, like I said, we got probably um, two, three hundred people there. Can, can I talk to you real quick? Let's see, there we go. 
Let's see if I can get this gentleman. You said uh, we're live on the air, Right okay. Side Broadcasting Network. You open it up. What you guys do? Yeah. We love what you guys do. We love the fact that uh, we have people like yourself that support us. Let's talk about prayer in all of this, and how much yes. prayer is needed right now, and not only in this country, but in this beautiful state of California. Yeah, prayer is definitely needed. Uh, God hears our prayers, and it's it, there's a battle. And I believe there's a, a, a spiritual battle that's taking place, and that, that can only be won in prayer. So God desires his people to pray. So we pray. Matter of fact, uh, part of our Tuesday uh, Bible study, we have a Tuesday night Bible study. Whenever there's an election time, we, we spend uh, much time. We just break into groups. Instead of, we do like a half a Bible study, and then we say, let's, let's break in groups, and we're going to pray for this election. And we've always, you know, we're, we're constantly praying. And uh, so prayer is very important. And when you look at Newsom and some of his policies, not only uh, economically, but what he's doing to kind of break up the traditional family unit, to break up the education of the indoctrination of our kids, God is on, not on his side, God is on Larry Elder's side for sure. Yeah, yeah, God's not on anyone's side that's okay with uh, killing babies. I mean, that's the number one concern of ours. Um, science tells us that there's a child there in the womb. And so if, uh, if anybody's okay with that, God's not okay with that. And we should never vote for a person like that. So we know Larry Elder uh, stands up for the sanctity of life. Uh, he's become a friend of mine. I, I love what he's doing. And so, yeah, I voted for Larry Elder. Yeah, and of course, all Californians want to wake up tomorrow and go to the polls and do, I think, what is the right thing to do and get somebody in, in office that... Uh, is uh, biblically sound and, and spiritually minded because I think that's what you know people underestimate the power of prayer in this country and, the, and what God can do to people's lives and if you uh, you know I said this before and, and I you know God's not going to bless the Biden administration at all he's not going to put his blessing on them because Biden goes against uh, what is what God's will is uh, God will bless however a Larry Elder administration yes I totally agree with you um, Righteousness exalts a nation. God will never bless sin. God, he just won't. He's holy. So God's holy, and he's calling people to repent from that, to turn away from their sin. Yeah. So he'll never bless sin, and what uh, the Biden administration's doing, it's sin. Yeah. And they need to repent, and, and, and shame on us as a country to put someone like that in office. All right, thank you so much. It looks like we're having Larry come out. Let's go ahead and, uh, let's go ahead and cut to the microphone. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, your next governor of California, Larry Elder. don't know my name is Tony Strickland I'm co-chair and chief strategist for Larry's campaign I'm here to introduce Larry but he really needs no introduction um, but I want to personally thank all of you uh, a lot all of you are our volunteers uh, supporters who've been manning the phone banks who've been doing everything you can walking door to door we have one day left uh, to make sure that Larry Elder is the next governor of California and and I'll tell you elections are about the future uh, that's what elections are about. They're about the kind of California that we want. I have two beautiful children. Um, my daughter's Ruby, and we call my, to my, my little one Tiny Tony. And I believe my kids deserve to have every opportunity that I had and even more opportunity. But unfortunately, with the California we have today, too many people are going to other states for that opportunity. That's what tomorrow's about. So when you get tired tomorrow and you don't want to make that next call, make that next call. When you're walking up that hill and that, that hill hit those last two homes, those two homes could be the difference between what we have today and really great leadership that's needed in Larry Elder. So without further ado, we are going to do this. We are going to do this with your help, all of our help. I play team sports my whole life. Larry's name's at the top of the ticket. But I will tell you, Larry's name's there, but it's a team. And I want to thank you for being part of our team and our team's going to make history tomorrow night. My honor to introduce the next governor of California, Larry Elder. Wow. Man, thank you so much for all your effort. You know, without you knocking on doors, calling people 
texting people, telling your friends, we could not bring this home. We're going to bring it home tomorrow. I've been, I've been asked all day, will you accept the results of the election? I said, you're asking the wrong question. I said, will Gavin Newsom accept the results of the election when he loses? I see Pastor Joe Pettick back there. Pastor, thank you for having me in your beautiful church in Huntington Beach. You know I'll be back as governor. It's been a long, sweet journey. Uh, I got into the race late, not because I was trying to be strategic. I just wasn't sure I wanted to do it. But I looked at the candidates who were running. I looked at the way this man shut down the state while ignoring science, while having his own kids enjoying in-person private education. And this is a big deal. He shut down in-person education for government-educated kids, 80% of whom are black and brown. I always bring that up because people on the left, like Gavin Newsom, claim that they care about black and brown people, but denying them the right to have in-person education for a whole year. And they're already behind. We spend almost 15 grand per student per year on government education, and our test scores are near the bottom of all 50 states. Well, we, I think only about 15 or 16 states spend more than we do. Half of all third graders before the pandemic could not read at state levels of proficiency, and those levels aren't high. The math scores are even worse. What's the route to leave poverty? According to the Brookings Institution, which is a left-wing think tank, I quote left-wing people whenever I can. The first step is to at least finish high school. One presumably where you can read, write, and compute at grade level. Hi, see you over there, Gina. Don't, don't try and hide. <laughs> Trying to be obscure. One where you can read, write, and compute at grade level. Now, black and brown parents living in the inner city want something. They want vouchers. They want the money to follow the child rather than the other way around. Polls show they want this. What's the number one obstacle towards choice in education? The teachers union, not teachers, teachers union. They are the most powerful union in the state. They're the biggest funder of my opponent, Gavin Newsom. And if you look at where teachers put their own school age kids, it's astonishing. 10% nationwide of us have our kids in private school. 6% of black families have their kids in private school. 44% of Philadelphia public school teachers have their own kids in private school. 39% of Chicago public school teachers have their own kids in private school. At the LA district where I am, if you are a public school teacher with a school age kid, you're twice as likely or more to have your own kid in a private school compared to a family that does not have a public school teacher in it. I've said before, that's the equivalent of opening up a restaurant, putting up a big sign saying, come on in. Eat the food. I sure as hell won't. <laughs> and yet, every election cycle, black and brown voters pull that lever for the Democratic Party that is stopping them from escaping poverty. Now, what they're afraid of and why all this heavy lumber has come in, by the, I'm talking about Obama cutting a commercial for him and Bernie Sanders cutting a commercial for him and Senator Warren cutting a commercial for him, is they're afraid I'm going to break this Jedi mind trick they've had over black and brown voters that cause them to continue voting for Democrats even though they're stopping choice in education, which is what you guys want. By the way, speaking of the people that have come in and cut commercials for uh, Gavin Newsom, Barack Obama cut a commercial for him. Let me, let me spend a little time on, uh, on Mr. Obama. Barack Obama, when he was 10 years old or so, was living in Indonesia with his stepfather, who was an oil company executive, and his mom. The oil company had a private school that was designed for oil company executives. But she didn't think that school was good enough. So she sent him to Hawaii to live with his maternal grandparents so he could attend the finest prep school in Hawaii. After he graduated from Punahou, he then comes to L.A. and he goes for two years to a private school, very exclusive school, called Occidental. Did two years there. Then he goes to New York and finishes up at an Ivy League school called Columbia. Then, of course, he goes to Harvard Law. The man never set foot in a public school. Michelle Robinson, his future wife, she did attend a public high school in Chicago, but it wasn't the nearby one. She got on a bus and went far away because the one nearby was inferior. The girls, Sasha Malia. Obama was an instructor at University of Chicago, and that school runs a private school for the teachers and professors who teach there. 
So Sasha and Malia went to a private elementary school. And then when the Obamas moved to Washington, D.C., Michelle Obama made a big deal out of sampling the public schools to determine where Sasha and Malia were going to go. And of course, she put them in Sidwell Friends, the same school that Chelsea Clinton went to, that right now is 40 grand a year. So the girls, K through 12, never set foot in a public school. Obama never set foot in a public school. And for all intents and purposes, Michelle Robinson, later on Michelle Obama, went to a charter school. Yet when Obama became president, he shut down the DC Scholarship Opportunity Program that provide vouchers for people, K through 12, most of whom were black parents. And when the program was reignited, it was oversubscribed. More people wanted in it than they had seats for it. My point is these people are hypocrites. They want choice for them, but not for you. They know a quality education is the key to upward mobility, but they're denying the very black and brown parents that they claim they care about the same opportunity. It's outrageous. And I'm making this argument and they're scared to death that they're gonna lose that stranglehold they have over black and brown voters. We have rise in crime for crying out loud. 20,000 convicted felons released during coronavirus early, many of them violent offenders, and based on history, a large number of them, if not the majority of them, are likely to reoffend. What could possibly go wrong? And just a few days ago, Barbara Boxer was mugged in Oakland. The former senator, her cell phone was taken. And a few days before that, the Oakland police chief complained about money being diverted from his police department because of this ridiculous defund the police movement. And according to the Associated Press, some 75, 76,000 more prisoners are going to be eligible for early release over the next coming months and coming years. This is absolutely outrageous. The number one job of government is to protect people and property that's not being done. Average price of a home in California just hit $800,000. That is anywhere from 150% to 250% above the national average, depending upon the study that you read. And for the first time in our state's history, people are leaving California. It's never happened before. And when middle class and working class people leave California, they cite as their number one reason for leaving, they cannot afford the price of a home. According to Leo Hanian, who is an economist who teaches at UCLA, the average price of a home in California is literally 50% more than it would be but for laws like the California Environmental Quality Act that allows virtually somebody to file a lawsuit to stop any development project for any reason for an indefinite period of time, which jacks up the price of a home. The average price of a home literally costs 50% more than it would be but for laws like CEQA. By the way, businesses are leaving at a record rate. More businesses have left California in 2021 than have left all of last year. And the rate at which they're leaving is twice the rate at which they've left the previous two, three, two or three years. And they cite the rise of the cost of living, taxes, and regulations. There's a magazine called CEO Magazine. It's been around 17 years. And for 17 years, they've asked CEOs, which is the worst state in which to do business, based upon taxes, based upon the power of the public sector unions based upon whether or not the state has a pro-business or an anti-business attitude based upon regulations. And for 17 consecutive years, California has been determined to be the worst state in which to do business. There's a war on the timber industry, which is why the trees have grown so thick. Outgoing Governor Jerry Brown left a plan to clear 500,000 acres of fallen trees and dry vegetation. Governor Gavin Newsom bragged that he cleared 90,000 acres, which, if true, would have been a drop in the bucket, but it wasn't true. According to the LA Times, he only cleared about 13% of what he said he cleared. He lied by a factor of seven. So the war in the timber industry means the trees grow real thick, and they're not being, they're not being cleared. The timber industry is probably about a quarter of what it used to be, because the environmentalists have convinced people that the spotted owl is more important uh, than people and jobs. We're having a water shortage here in California. There's a drought. Droughts are God-made, but shortages are man-made. We haven't added to our water infrastructure in about 40 or 50 years when the state was half its size. It's not like voters don't know what to do. We pass bond measure after bond measure after bond measure to build more reservoirs, to raise dams, to build more underground water storage. So when it rains, we should be storing water. Instead, the water drains right out into the Pacific Ocean. There's a desert country in the Middle East called Israel. They are now water self-sufficient. 
because of desalination plants. They have a body of water right next to it called the Mediterranean. We have a body of water right next to us called the Pacific Ocean, and we can't figure it out? We're having rolling brownouts. We have all these brilliant people in Silicon Valley, and we're having rolling brownouts because more and more of our utility companies are pressured to put more and more of their resources into weather-dependent, unreliable sources of power like wind and solar. It takes almost an act of Congress to drill an oil well and to, to, to deal with the underground oil and the natural gas we have. So on every level, whether it's crime, whether it's the rise of homelessness, by the way, Gavin Newsom ran for mayor in 2004 in San Francisco and promised to clean up the homeless problem in 10 years. That would have been 2014. Have you been to San Francisco lately? <laughs> and when he was lieutenant governor, he complained he had nothing to do. I suggested perhaps he might want to work on the campaign promise he made back in 2004. So if you can tell me what front, where this man has made life better for Californians in the last two years. I'd love to hear it. Not on crime, not on the decline of the quality of public education, not on the rise of the cost of living, not on businesses leaving at a faster rate than they've left the previous two years, not on more businesses having left this year than have left all of last year, not on fire management, not on water management, not on power management. He has been an abject failure. And I haven't even talked about the $30 billion that was stolen from the Employment Development Division that department was designed to make sure that Californians got their unemployment checks, unemployment checks that they deserve because Gavin Newsom shut down the state, shut down businesses, shut down jobs. $30 billion were stolen by crooks applying for unemployment benefits from San Quentin and by crooks in Nigeria applying for California unemployment benefits and getting them. Meanwhile, a million Californians were waiting for their checks and they were not getting them. So I can't think of any level, any front, any policy this man has engaged in that has made life better for here, uh, for us in California. He shut down churches while keeping open strip clubs and marijuana dispensaries and liquor stores, casinos. Thank you. You want to write my speech next time? <laughs> so, you know, this is all about turnout because if we turn out the vote, we win. You know, I've been asked over and over and over again about voter integrity. And I said, look, two million people signed that petition. A good a quarter of them were the very people that voted for him just two years earlier. The majority of Hispanics voted for him, 63% two years earlier. Now the majority of Hispanics want him gone. And the primary reason is school choice. That is why former state Senator Gloria Romero crossed party alliance bravely to support me. She's still a Democrat. But when you do that, that party calls you everything but a child of God. And she is bearing the brunt of the betrayal uh, that her party feels she engaged in by simply supporting me because she supports school choice. Now, one final thing. You know, uh, I was uh, the victim of an egg attack when I was in uh, Venice Beach at a homeless encampment. Yeah, oh, oh, uh, I, was, I was reminded someone wearing a gorilla mask threw an egg at me. Uh, sir, um, how do you know it was a mask? <laughs> now, now, I'm going to be accused of being sexist. I'm just making a little joke here, a little humor. But maybe she was one of the 20,000 people that was, that was uh, released early by, uh, by Gavin Newsom. I don't know. And maybe she should have been behind bars, but she wasn't behind bars because we have cashless bail. I don't know. All I know, seriously, is that had that happened to somebody with a D at the end of his name who'd been black, Oh my goodness, it would have been the lead story. There would have been a manhunt, international manhunt. They'd be talking about this in Bangladesh. <laughs> and speaking of double standards, um, as you know, I was called the black face of white supremacy by the, by the LA Times. Yeah, I, 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 I thought I wasn't black. So I guess, <laughs> I guess I'm black. But speaking of double standards, there was an article, front page article about me in the New York Times. And I've never asked anybody to vote for me because I'm black. I never ask anybody to vote against me because I'm black. And frankly, this business about me being the first black governor, I've said when Obama became uh, first black president, as far as I'm concerned, everything else after that is anticlimactic. However, on the first page of the New York Times, big article about me, negative, about all the horrible things I'm gonna do up to and including, uh, I guess, reenacting slavery, I don't know. 
It's going to be Armageddon. People are going to be dying in the streets after an elder gets elected. People are falling over dead. And it was negative. And it did not mention one word about the fact that I'm black. Didn't say one word about the fact that when I get elected, I'll be the first black governor of California. And I'm fine with that. Again, I've never ever asked anybody to vote for me or against me because I'm black. I think race has never been less significant in American life than today. So I'm fine with that. But on the very same page, article about the, quote, first female governor of New York, close quote. Now, so it was a big deal that this uh, woman became governor of New York, even though she didn't run and get elected. She took over because Cuomo dropped out. But that was a big deal. She had a D at the end of her name. I have an R at the end of my name, and I'm no longer black. It's amazing how that happens. <laughs> So I want to thank all of you. And again, just make sure we get out the vote. We get out the vote, we win. Yes. Now, now um, so, so, so those of you who've heard, my, heard me speak before, have you heard about the dream I had the other night? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I had a dream. I steal from the best. As I said, Someone once said, originality is the art of concealing your source. And whoever said that probably stole it from somebody else. <laughs> but I had a dream. It's late October, 2021, Tony. And the World War II vet ambles up to a security guard at the Capitol building in Sacramento. And he's got two hearing aids. He's got a cane. I mean, he's a World War II vet. And we're losing him every day. Greatest generation. And he said, sir. I'd like to speak to Governor Gavin Christopher Newsom. And the guard says, sir, Gover Governor Gavin Christopher Newsom is no longer governor of California. We have a new governor. His name is Governor Larry Elder. <laughs> Second day, same vet, same guard. Sir, I'd like to speak to Governor Gavin Christopher Newsom. Now the guard's thinking, okay, I see the two hearing aids. He probably can't hear very well. Sir. Governor Gavin Christopher Newsom is no longer governor of California. We have a new governor. His name is Governor Larry Elder. Third day, same vet, same guard. Sir, I'd like to speak to Governor Gavin Christopher Newsom. Now the guard's thinking, okay, the guy probably has dementia, maybe Alzheimer's. So he says, sir, Governor Gavin Christopher Newsom is no longer governor of California. We have a new governor. His name is Governor Larry Elder. The vet says, oh, I know. I just love hearing you say it. Thank you all so much. Thank you all so much. Let's get out the vote. Make sure you have your friends vote, 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 and try and get 10 more friends to vote and hit every call, make every call, knock on every door. We're going to win this thing if we turn out the vote. Thank you. All right, that wraps up about a 30-minute uh, uh, presentation with Larry Elder on stage. I don't think he has time to speak with us, but we will get up front and get some reaction uh, from some of the people attending. And, of course, he did put a big effort to get the vote out tomorrow, encourages everyone to to come out and, and vote and tell a friend, bring a... All right, Smith, there you go. Yeah. What's that? What do you what do you love about Larry Elder? What do you love about Larry Elder? I mean, honestly, he, he's he's right on point on everything that California needs. And the number one thing we do need for sure is to get Newsom out of here. I made 275 calls to make sure that got done today. I could barely talk, so talk to him. <laughs> well, what, what, what I'm seeing is a lot of people are saying just what you're saying. There's a huge effort to recall Newsom. So I, I look at these polls that they're doing, supposedly. I don't believe a single one of them because all the people that I talk to is all for this. I seriously made 275 calls and every person that picked up that said yes to recall said yes to Larry Elder, including two Democrats. Let's see if we can get a few minutes with him real quickly. I'm People are fed up with what's going on in Sacramento and they want to change and I'm going to be that change. So far, what would you change now in terms of your campaign? Is there anything, are there any mistakes? Anything you've looked back and, you know, I should do that differently. 
Um, I have to reflect on that. So far, I'm happy with the way I've run. I think I've run a campaign of integrity. I haven't uh, dissed on my uh, Republican rivals. I've tried to focus on the target, and the target is Gavin Newsom because the way he shut down the state, the way homelessness is on the rise, uh, the way the price of a home has now hit $800,000, which is at least 150% above the national average, and the fact that people leave in California for the very first time. Businesses are leaving at a rapid, more, more rapid rate than they've left in the last two years. More businesses have left uh, this year than have left all of last year, and I'm focusing on all of that, and when I focus on all of that, I think it will remind people why Gavin Newsom needs to go. What are the solutions, though? You do speak a you're, lot about the problems, have, but what are the solutions? <laughs> you're running questions? <laughs> Never do. Here's a volunteer for <laughs> you, dear. Can you yeah. like to say the Latino voters? Yes, I, I support school choice, and Latino voters support school choice, and Gavin Newsom opposes it, and the largest funder of Gavin Newsom is a teacher union, and they're adamantly opposed to school choice. Anything you like to say in Spanish? Basta. Enough. Vota mañana for Larry Elder. Could you speak on the solutions to homelessness? All right, of course, Larry Elder is addressing some of the volunteers here. This is why he's here, to thank the volunteers that have been with him throughout this recall effort and really getting across the state. So this is for them, and we have been requested to step back a little bit and let them enjoy a little bit of uh, their personal connection with Larry Elder. Of course, you might be familiar with him, longtime conservative talk show host. A lot of people across the nation are familiar with Larry Elder. And, and really, whenever he threw uh, his name in the hat, and he said earlier, he threw it in very late in the, in the race that he decided that the list of candidates that were running for governor weren't good enough. And he thought, why not now? Why not me? And that's exactly what he's done over the last uh, year or so for this campaign, really stepped aside from everything, dedicating all of his efforts to the state of California. And that is one of the reasons why so many people uh, are supporting uh, Larry Elder uh, for governor. Of course, tomorrow is Election Day here in California. We definitely encourage, if you have not voted yet, uh, to get to the, the polls tomorrow and make that happen. Of course, the stage is set with there's two questions on the ballot. First is, do you support the recall of uh, Gavin Newsom? The second is, then, if not, if so, then who? And that's exactly uh, what the two question is on that ballot. So we'll find out tomorrow. We'll be live here tomorrow night at election headquarters for all that good stuff and uh, to bring all of the latest results uh, to you. Uh, from here, Costa Mesa, as this has ramifications across the country right now. This election is big for this country. This election is a game changer for the U.S. as far as changing the tide uh, and for the liberal policies that have been coming out of the state, which they're quite honestly affect uh, many other states. So if they can change the narrative here, uh, perhaps that has ripple effects across uh, the country. Uh, we want to do thank our partners of the day. Um, I love my freedom.com. I love my freedom.com. We encourage you to go to the website and support these guys because they are helping us get out and support the efforts of this recall, Gavin Newsom, and of course, supporting a fine patriot like Larry Elder. So please go to my, I love my freedom.com. I love my freedom.com. And don't forget to put in the promo code RSBN when you check out and you'll get substantial discounts and specials on a lot of offers. We've got some buy one, get ones that are on there as well. They'll even pay the shipping on certain products. So go check it out there at ilovemyfreedom.com. Larry's just talking to a few of his uh, volunteers here. People are talking about the number of calls that they make. Uh, a lot of people have dedicated a lot of time and effort uh, on behalf of Larry making those phone calls. We talked to a guy earlier that said all he did was make phone calls. Yes, my dream is going to come true. I'm going to be the next governor of California. No question about it. People are fed up. Uh, people are leaving California for the, for the very first time. Uh, my opponent doesn't have a clue what to do. Uh, he was born on third base and thought he hit a triple. I'm from the hood. My dad came here without two nickels to rub together uh, and made it from poverty to the middle class by working hard uh, and by believing in himself. Uh, and by not uh, pushing racial division, which is what the left and the Democratic Party has done. Uh, they divided this state. I'm going to heal this state. Uh, they may not agree with me on taxes, on spending, on other, on other things, but they'll agree with me that we have far more in common than we have apart. And I believe in the Martin Luther King dream of evaluating people based on content of character and not color of skin. I'm not going to divide people. I'm not going to be pushing bogus concepts like critical race theory or like reparations, which in my opinion is the extraction of money from people who are never slave owners to be given to people who are never slaves. Racism has never been a less significant problem in America today. It's about hard work and about accountability. I thought you said you just had one question. So, so yeah. the first thing you're going to tackle, 
would be what? There are a number of things I'm going to tackle. I'm going to tackle the rise in crime. I'm going to tackle the, uh, the water shortage. I'm going to tackle the fact that we have a housing shortage. Uh, and to the extent that there are still mandates for state workers who have not been vaccinated, that they have to be tested once a week uh, and wear face masks at work, I'm going to repeal those. Okay. Thank you, guys. Let him and, of course, he's dressed in the media. Of course, this was a few minutes that he could spend with his volunteers. So uh, he's also taking some pictures doing just that. Uh, this is something that's very passionate. We have seen over the last uh, few days, I've been walking the streets here in California and seeing the reaction that they have for this man as far as running for governor, such a connection with uh, his fans and his supporters. And of course, uh, he has got a great story of being from South Central and being able to uh, get out of uh, uh, the, that situation and, and, and really make a great life uh, for himself, not only as a businessman, as an attorney, uh, but also in uh, the conservative news network. And so uh, he's certainly the ideal candidate. And will we see the shock that we saw back in 2016 uh, with the presidential election, of course, going into that election, uh, a lot of people didn't have a whole lot of hope, at least the polls said that Donald Trump did not have a chance in the 2016 election. And then obviously uh, Trump ran away with that. This could be this very similar situation here as a lot of polls are showing that Gavin Newsom uh, uh, there's enough support for Gavin Newsom to continue to be governor in this state. But as we really talk to the people and find out some of the numbers that they're getting and some of the statistically is that they're getting, I don't, I don't think that's the case. And we're going to find out here tomorrow. I think there is your next governor of California, no doubt, because he's got the support of the people and he's definitely done a great job of getting the message out uh, to everyone. So we're just glad to happy to be here. I didn't want to see if I can get a just a handshake with him real quickly uh, to let him know that everyone here at Right Side Broadcasting definitely uh, has his back. We also want to thank our nice patriots, uh, Mike Lindell over at MyPillow.com. That is one guy that has done nothing but election integrity. They like Right Side. He came to me earlier and said that. I mean, I have you a couple of minutes. Come, why don't you come in here? I was just talking about our good patriot, Mike Lindell. You got to love that guy at MyPillow. Yes, I definitely do. I've ordered some of his products. Yes. We I all appreciate it. And of course, if you put that promo code uh, RSB in a checkout, you'll get up to 66% off. Let's talk about Larry Elder. Why do you love him so much? Policies. Let's flip over it's here. Sorry. I don't want to. Sorry. There we go. Why is he so appealing to you as a voter? His policies. His policies um, that he wants to improve the lives of the working people here in California. We are tired. We are tired. We, we are being run to the ground by Gavin. And we're done. We are done. We are paying $5 per gallon of gas. Yeah, I, I don't think a lot of people c can understand what effect that has on everything when gas is as high as that talking about food labor transportation everything everything every, it affects everything when i go pick up my food from any restaurant brian that's all they tell me sorry we had to increase correct everything is increased inflation and come on brian the homeless i i work in west yeah. los angeles i see them every day on my way to work and you have to walk around them over them and of course a lot of them are defecating on the sidewalk i just saw it today and, and uh I, I got, it was it was disgusting and, and i didn't think it was going to happen right in front of me uh but it did and it, it, it's it's a different world it's almost like a third world country sometimes worse 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 yeah very much so and so he needs to stop we're just done we are done and and all he can't even talk about anything about policy brian all he talks about is okay let's see what negative thing can i say about mr elder's character yeah. sexist you know let's come up with something to defame his character yeah. what about come up with some a policy solution. that can fix california yeah it's, it's it's really interesting how you see people that are against him uh, but they never say what the, what they're actually for, what they support. I mean, what, how can you support Gavin Newsom's radical agenda here in California? How can you support that? Indoctrination of our the youth that are going to vote tomorrow, that are college students, that have been indoctrinated in college. That's the problem. Well, thank you. God bless for coming out here. Thank you for watching the network. Oh, there you go. I saw you. Every
all the time. I always watch God you guys. Bless. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And of course, uh, just a little bit. I don't. I hate to. I know that he's spending some time with his fans right now, and I don't want to get in there and break up this moment because this is about the volunteers on the elder camp, and so we want to make sure that. Uh, we, we allowed him to have that moment, but we will see if we can eavesdrop in here momentarily to see exactly uh, if we can get a few minutes with him. And we, and we continue to let everybody know that you can get all this content and a whole lot more. Go to our app, your Android, your iOS store, and download the RSBN app right there on your phone. Not only can you get a lot of these live events, but you can get all the programming uh, that we have as well. And we have seen such a substantial increase in downloads. And I know if you might have went to our app originally when we rolled it out, you might have been a few bugs on that app and maybe haven't been back since then. I encourage you to download the app today and you'll be able to live stream a lot of this content right there. And we've worked some of those bugs out that might have distracted you from going back to our app. But we've had over 164,000% uh, gain on our app since we rolled it out months ago. So I just encourage you to please download our app. Go to your Android or iOS store and download it today and, 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 and have all of our content in the palm of your hand. I'm going to continue to sit over here and uh, monitor over and see if we can't, uh, you know, maybe get a few a few moments with uh, with uh, Mr. Elder as he uh, is wrapping up his time here. And of course, as a reminder, our coverage kicks off tomorrow at eight o'clock uh, Pacific time, local time here in California. Our election headquarters will be right here with Larry Elder in this room. On the other side of this tent is a big ballroom. We'll continue to uh, bring you uh, the breaking news and all of the developing polls that are coming in throughout the day. And um, so who knows how that, uh, how exciting tomorrow night will be. So we encourage everyone to tune in and watch as we have continuous coverage on that. Uh, Larry, once again, sharing a few moments uh, with some uh, volunteers and fans and thanking his supporters for coming out. Of course, we've had a gentleman earlier uh, said he did 800 phone calls in the last week of calling people at random and getting, uh, you know, polling information from them, getting what they anticipated them doing. And we are seeing such an overwhelming support for Larry Elder for governor here in California. It's going to be really interesting to see how uh, tomorrow plays out in the sense of uh, voter turnout and what we actually get to the polls. You know, they always often say it's not uh, it's not who shows up to vote, but who shows up to count the vote as well. And we hope that none of that happens uh, here uh, in California. And of course, I know that President Trump had put out a statement about some of those voting irregularities uh, here in the state. And we certainly hope that that's not uh, the case. He is signing a couple things for there, but I want to encourage you please to uh, stay tuned to us tomorrow. And for any information about Right Side, just simply go to our website, rsbnetwork.com rsbnetwork.com and then if you want to donate, go to rsbnetwork.com slash donate and as Larry Elder says, put something in a tip jar there, rsbnetwork.com slash donate to help continue us to go across not only the, the country but here in California to cover this election and bring you the very latest from what's going on in the world of politics and as a reminder, September 25th, we are in Macon, Georgia at the uh, Georgia County Fairgrounds, I believe. Another Donald Trump rally scheduled for the 25th of September. Plus, coming up on October 9th, we are back in Iowa. Des Moines, Iowa will be live October 9th for that rally as well. And we have Amp Fest happening at Trump Doral down in Miami. Also on the 9th, we'll bring that coverage starting from a Thursday to a Saturday. We'll bring that exclusively uh, to you there. All right, let's go ahead and wrap it up here from the beautiful Hilton Hotel here in Costa Mesa, California, Orange County. Programming note, tomorrow we are live 8 o'clock uh, local time here on the West Coast for all of your election coverage for the Gavin Newsom recall and the election of that man right there, Larry Elder. Until next time. Goodbye. God bless from California. See you back here tomorrow.